Shalom Aleichem, and welcome to this uh, part of Online Smicha, where this topic is the famous issue of Cherem de Rabbeinu Gershon, marrying more than one wife. And this uh, topic is it will be discussed and will be broken down into four short segments. Um, the first part is Chelek Aleph, Hamutar Menatera Umide Rabbanon, is it permitted in the Torah and is it permitted in the Rabbanon whatever issues the Torah and the Rabbanon had to allow possibly one to marry more than one wife. The second part is the issue of the Isser of Cherem the Rabbeinu Gershon. Why did he place the issue, the Isser? What was his concerns? The third part, the third segment will be under what conditions are you allowed to be mevatel that chayim the rabbeinu gershons? And the fourth part, the final part, would be once you meet those conditions, how are you, how are you able to be mevatel? What is the way to be mevatel the chayim? Basically, this, the chayim is such a strict thing. How do you deal with the hetamei rabbanim, etc., etc.? So today we're going to discuss chayim. What is permitted? Is it allowed to marry more than one wife? Now, for this, I opened the first chart with the headline and I discussed basically the three major issues that that decide if this is an this if this is an issue if this is a concern that the Torah would have. And they are as follows. Number one is Efshar Lemekam Vesiku Kayu. If you want to marry more than one wife, you know that every person marrying has the responsibility in the Ksuba to support and take care of each, each woman that he marries. So if he's willing to marry more than one, one of the conditions that we have, one of the conditions that we have to make sure, is if he's if he's able to support them all. Asher lemekem b'sipakayu is he able to support everybody, who as many as he wants to marry. The second one, the second condition is, if Ruve marries at chaf of, he marries tuba of, he marries Rachel, and then at a later date he wants to marry a second wife. We have to take in consideration the fact that the first wife who we married on Tuba of, what was her intention? What did she know? Why was she willing to marry this Ruven? Because as if, he, if this woman, Rachel, was tricked into the marriage, her condition is not, is not really fair. So we have to make sure that, in a, that this is a situation that that the woman, wife number one, knew that this is a possibility that might come down further in time, and yet she was willing to accept him as her husband. Because if not, again, her condition is in doubt. Now, last but not least, is if a person will marry more than one wife in different places, especially in different cities and different countries, then the, uh, people people in this country will know that they're happily married, and Baruch Hashem, they have a family, they have children. In another city, another country, he has another wife where he's married to another woman, and he has children there, and it could be a, a, a side big issue, and the side big issue is, Shema Yizdavku Abonim Zelaza. We know that there's the Arayis that are Asim in Atayra, there's the Arayis that are Asim in the Rabbanim, Half sisters, half brothers, these are all major issues in the Arias. And just because uh, he, he has se- they have separate mothers, in this country he's married to one person and he has this, these children. These children from this country are definitely not allowed to marry their, their half siblings from the other marriage. So, therefore, that is the third concern that we have to make sure that it shouldn't be or it should be known, or people should see, it should be obvious that these have the same father, that chas should not lead to a rise. 
So we're going to start all over again, and I have to note that this is clearly, this is not a, uh, a theoretical halacha, this is a halacha which is elaborated and discussed clearly in Shulchan Baruch. And that is in Hilchus Kiri of Arabia, Eben Ezer, Si'if Tes, Simon Aleph, Si'if Tes. And the first Simon, after the halacha talks about the importance of getting married at young age and having a wife that you, you Baruch Hashem, uh, are establishing a family, the mitzvah of Puravu. So in Si'if Tes it says like this, Noisei Adam Kamenashim. A person, a man, is allowed to marry many women, many wives. But with the condition, for who the Efshar will make him besipikayu. It's with the condition if he's able to support them all. Because that's a responsibility that a husband has to his wife. If, he, if he's able to support them all, and he's not taking away anything from the first wife, then it's mashma from this halacha, he's allowed to marry more than one. Whom we call Mokrein, nevertheless, Nasnu Chachamim Eitz Ateva, the Chachamim give a good advice, Shalayisa Adam Yaisar Midalit Nashim, that one should not marry more than four women, Kideshi Yagia Lechol Achas Oina Bechaydish, because the Vesas, as the Mepharshim say over here, Every w- woman's vessus is once the cycle usually changes once a month, and the the the, the, the whole purpose over here is to have a larger family, and he had to be able to do that. He should have at least one time, once a month, to be with each wife. So that's once a week, and, and this is typically we're talking about the time period of a Talmud Chacham, which the Oina is Lishabbos Lishabbos. So four weeks. Four Shabbosim is four wives, so each wife will be able to have Oyna Lechaydish. So, there's a lot of things that have to be discussed here by Rikus. First of all, just like there's a Chiv to, to give Mazaynas, to give support, to give sustenance, Parnasa, there's also a Chiv in the Ksuba called Oyna, so why is it only a Eitzah Teva? The Eitzah Teva, not to marry more than Dalad Nashim. And perhaps that's because, yes, he's going, to ha- he's going to fulfill that obligation too. But it should be each one in a month. That's the Eitz Um So we have now that Menadim, you're allowed to marry as many as you could, as many as you want, if you're able to support them. But the Eitz HaToyva is not more than four. Now, who is this to benefit? The fact that you have to have Make him besipikayu, that he, he, he should be able to support them. So the chalkis mechayikin in Sivkat and Yudgimel actually ha, is left with a suffix. His suffix is what would be, be the din? Imhi meicheles. Imhi meicheles means uh, the first wife with the second wife are all willing to accept living a much lower standard. Like this, you need a, a, a more of a more of a panacea to come, so they should have a, a decent life. But because of whatever circumstance they are, Michael, they are willing to forgive their luxurious life and to live a very modest life. Would that allow the husband to marry more wives? Is it a din in? The, the, to protect the wife that she gets, the first wife at least, that she gets everything she needs, or it's a din of Bezdin has to be responsible. And this is how he puts it. Yeishli histapik ima iser mitzada isha is it to protect, the isha is to protect the wife, and therefore, as long as she's not getting, the first wife is not getting all that she needs from the she'era, the ksusa, and the inasa, the responsibilities that the husband takes for his wife when he marries her. So she could be Meicha. And therefore, and therefore, if she says, you know what, forget about me. I'm, I, I'm happy with what I have. Go ahead, and if it minimizes some of my money, I don't mind. So that Mechila will work. Or do we say that even if she's willing to give it away, Bezdin puts their foot down. Bezdin says, no. We have to make sure that there's a proper amount of Mezoinus, 
the proper amount, the proper amount of parnasa for each individual, and mechila for such a thing will not work. Now, that is the chelkus mechaykik. If you look in the base Shmuel Yudches, it says the base Shmuel, im hi mechelas if she is mechol. He says, clearly, if she's willing to live with a minimum, it's a definite that that's fine, the person can marry as many as he wants. Because the Chelkas Mechaikit himself comes to Araya from a Pasuk, it's a Pasuk in Yeshaya, which happens to be in a negative Pasuk, where the Pasuk says, V'achziku shevanoshim v'ish echad, will come a time right before Mashiach time, where seven women will hang on to one man, and they'll say, L'achmeinu neichal v'simuleseinu nilbash, just please, rak yikare shimcha aleinu, just let us, let us be your husband, so we should be married to somebody. Shiva, Shiva Noshim, Be'ish Achad. As long as they're happy, they're satisfied with what they're getting, it's mashma that it's not a problem. Whereas others, the Gra, there are those that learn from the from the Vir, uh, Medayik from the Gvir Gra, that he holds that uh, even when she's Mechelas, even when she's Mechelas, most probably not. And this is a, a diuk in the gra. Some some uh, gerses don't have it. What is the sheer hasipuk? How much? When you say in actually make him basipukayu, then he could marry as many as he wants. So an oiter oiter a poskim. He brings some different svarim, different shalos of shuvah svarim. He says he has to have money available. For supporting them, if it's money that's tied down in gold and silver and it's not available, that's not called sipukayu. That's not money that he has in his hand to support them. But if he has money that he, he, he can get his hands on quick enough to support them, we'll be fine. And that is the first talacha. That minatayra, we are concerned about parnasa. If he's able to, if, if he has enough money where he could support as many as he wants to marry, it's fine, but preferably not more than four because of the Aina Lechol Chaydish. And Aina, now even though, as I mentioned before, that's only for Talmud Chachem, that's Pam and Mishabas and Shabbos. So the place can again bring, what, how will this change, how will this change by all other standard, standards of people? Does it, does it apply there? Or perhaps by, by then you can have even more, even more than than uh, four wives, as we see in the pasuk. The next point that we are concerned with is the das ha'isha bekedushin arishayim. So what does this come from? Because if you look at the end of this seif, at the end of the seif. The Mechaber says, Now this is even before the Chaim de Rabbeinu Gershon. He says, there was some, if you live in a place, that it's customary in that place not to marry more than one. You're not allowed to marry somebody else, a second wife. Says the Chalkas Mechaikeg over here too. What's the reason over here? Because the under of the muhachi, this is a, a proven fact, the Hadaita the Hachi in Sivale, that when she got married, the, the first wife got married, being that she was growing up and living in a place where it's only one husband unto one wife, she accepted that's why that's only in that condition she's willing to get married. So her condition her condition was how because of that thought in mind. And if if things will change later on, if he's acting different than the custom of what they grew up with, that's not what she thought about. 
and it's not it's similar to different job descriptions that a person had, different responsibilities that a person has to give over to his wife. If it switches, that's not something that she had in mind. But the difference between the first worry and the second worry is the first worry the Chalkas and Mechayi King had a suffix. What would be the din of Shiz Michael? In the second worry, he clearly says, Umemela, the Rishus Ishtai, if the wife knows about it now, and he knows that even though when she got married, even though when she got married, her, her understanding was he will not marry a second one because that was the pra- practice of where they grew up. But if he asks her, and she is Michael, she gives her shoes, if it's all her that we're concerned about, for sure, for sure, mutter. And then there is the third concern. And that is, in Simon Bay's Seif Yud Aleph, La Yisa Adam Isha Bemdina Zu, the Yelach the Yisa Isha Acheres Medina Acheres, a person should not marry one wife in this country and be in another country and marry somebody else, because Shema Yis Davdu Habanim Zelaze, because he he'll have kids from two wives. And they are a rayas. They are not allowed to marry each other because they have the same father. The nimsa ach What will be is that a brother might marry his half sister. However, Adam Gadol However, if he's talking about, if we're talking about a famous person, and everybody knows everything about him. and all of whoever is his children, everybody knows about them. Mutter, because they will not intermarry. So if you look in the Pishchei Tshuva over there, the Pishchei Tshuva, Sif Katan Yud, says this whole discussion, if a person can marry here one and another country another one and worry about Arayas, is only prior to the whole issue of Cherem de Rabbeinu Gershon. But Ha'idna, uh, the ain Naisim Shnei Nashim, today's days where anyways you're not going to marry two wives because of the Cherem de Rabbeinu Gershon, there's no big deal about the Salacha because it's not going to happen anyways. And there's the discussion when you learn those Salachas, uh, the discussion is uh, marrying, if you're worried about the Arayas part, how about marrying another wife after your first wife passes away? Still, they will have half-brothers, half-sisters. And that's the discussion here. So to summarize it, as long as the husband is able to support his wife, as many wives as he wants, and as long as the woman knew in advance that this might happen, or even if she didn't know in advance, as long as she knows now and she's willing to accept it, and there the children will be in a way that everybody will know that this is my half-sister, my half-brother, and even with the Rabbana, until the Chem the Rabbeinu Gershon comes along, there is no problem. And a person can marry as many as he wants. And as the Pasuk Yeshaya says, that a person was able to marry seven. Yes, Sikoyach, and please join us for part two next time.